Hey guys, this is my uh, General Tso's brand, aka cheap Chinese import you can get from eBay or Amazon, 12 volt DC power supply. The sticker on the side says it's 40 amps. That's a lie. I'll probably call it a 30 amp power supply the whole time. But they're not too bad. Uh, they do put out a lot of current, especially for their price tag. The voltage regulation is pretty good. The ripple is acceptable. They're a pretty good deal except for the fan noise. See, they changed these things recently. Used to be they had a little bimetal switch in them to turn the fan on and off based on temperature. They don't do that anymore. Now it just runs all the time and it runs faster the more load you put on the power supply. Uh, that's annoying and unnecessary. So let's bust into this thing, add the parts back that used to be there and see if we can't make it a little better. Hey, we're all disconnected. Getting these things apart is pretty easy. First thing is you have to cut your sticker and <laughs> void your warranty. Ha ha ha. And then if you look on the sides, there are two screws towards the top of the power supply on each side. And there are two towards the top on the back end. I have to disconnect my two buck converters from the output screws. And then the whole thing lifts off. And the first thing you're gonna notice is of course the fan is still attached. Now, there is a little white connector down here that you can just simply pull and the fan will disconnect. Okay, well, I'm just gonna hope that this is focusing. But anyway, you can see right down in here, this white connector is where the fan was plugged in. And over here, just on the other side of these two capacitors, is this jumper, what's it labeled, RT2. So that, space right there, those two terminals that are just bridged together with a jumper, that's where this bimetal connector used to attach. So it attaches electrically down there and physically it's supposed to live in here, hello, inside of this uh, toroidal filter for the output current. The good news is all the connection points we need are still there. The bad news is we have to take the circuit board out to get at these things. Fortunately, getting the circuit board out isn't really that bad. There are a couple of screws holding it down to the base. There are supposed to be five. Somehow, mine only came with three, but uh, the circuit board has never magically jumped out of the box, so I've never worried about it. And the other thing you have to do is you have to free these diodes and these transistors back here from their heat sink attachment to the outside of the case. That is a single screw that's on the outside of the case. Mine is uh, underneath the power supply ratings sticker in the case of the diodes. And this bar that goes across here is a giant nut for the whole thing. So you take the screw and you loosen it and the bar will come out. And then technically these diodes are free of the heat sink, but the board won't clear that piece of metal. So you go back to the side of the case, there's another screw underneath the sticker and a matching one at the other side of the sticker. And those happen to be the same as the case screws, but I keep them sorted anyway. And then this piece of metal will lift right out. And with that all done, the circuit board would lift straight out of the case if the case wasn't such a piece of garbage and had these aluminum burrs on it. So the very first time you take the circuit board out, it's going to be a juggling act, but it will sort of slide out at an angle. Don't lose the insulating plastic for the bottom of the case. And uh, if you're going to be taking yours apart a bunch of times, like I seem to be doing, you might want to consider filing down these burrs on the sides of the case so that the board will lift in and out. Right here are the two terminals of that jumper. Uh, we need to get that out of there, so I need to take this solder away. It's not intuitively obvious, but often it is much, much easier to desolder a component if you go ahead and you apply some flux. And those of you who think, man, I can't solder, my guess is you haven't discovered flux yet. And we'll take freshly tinned iron with a good blob of solder on it and get in there and load that thing up so there's a big old ball of solder there. Now when you bring in the solder sucker, you got enough there that the vacuum can get a hold of it. Plus, you've got fresh solder that you know, in my case, is 60-40 tin. A lot of these boards are soldered with uh, lead-free solder because they have to, to go to Europe. And uh, that stuff is a pain in the butt. 
You get it good and hot, suck away. Get it good and hot, suck away. And I managed to get one end completely and totally loose by doing that. So I'm gonna go over here on the front side of the board and just pry that up. So now if I get a hold of that with a pair of pliers and just touch the solder joint here, it'll pull right out. These are bimetal, normally open switches, so they won't run the fan until they get hot. I bought this two pack from Amazon. I'll leave a link below. You can get them cheaper from Banggood, uh, but I wanted them fast and I didn't need 10 or 20 of them, so Amazon it was. You see this one is sticking out of its heat shrink tubing a little bit. Now, I can just slide it back on there, but something to bear in mind, that kind of matters because one of these two terminals, let's see if I get lucky, yeah, this one, is actually connected to the case on here. So uh, don't forget that you need this heat shrink tubing in order to keep the thing insulated from whatever your circuit is. And there's no polarity to this, so I'm gonna choose which wire I stick in which hole based on uh, the natural sort of curvature of the thing. I want my switch to end up over here in this toroid, so uh, I'm just gonna put it in that way. And we'll solder it up. Nicely tinned iron, get the wire hot. You want the solder to flow all by itself. After you discover the joy of using flux, you'll get to discover the joy of cleaning flux. I just got a little rubbing alcohol here. It comes right off. This flux is supposed to be non-corrosive, non-degrading, but um, it's not really a big deal to clean it either. Well, now that the soldering's done, it's a good time to bust out the soldering mat. Brilliant. I got this because I need an insulated surface to set the circuit board on. I'm gonna do something that you should absolutely positively not do, which is plug this thing in and test it outside of its case. Uh, what you should do is put this thing completely back together, put it back in its nice, safe, protective case, turn it on and put some load on it and make sure that the fan does eventually kick on. But for the purposes of science, we'll do it this way and you guys can just watch, let me do the dangerous stuff. All right, you can see the green light is on. We are plugged in the wall, we are hot. This thing is on, but the fan is not running. That's what we like. But we also liked being alive, so we're not gonna touch anything in here because it's all hot. Speaking of hot, let's grab the hot air gun and uh, blow some hot air on this thing, see if we can heat it up, maybe form that shrink tubing a little better, but more importantly, test and make sure that this fan does eventually come on. I could have put a bigger tip on here so I didn't have to crank this thing up to blast. And there we go, it got hot, the fan kicked on. I love it. Take the hot away and make sure that the fan actually turns off. This thing supposedly closes at 45 degrees centigrade and opens at 33 degrees centigrade which is more than enough of a dead band to keep the fan from kicking on and off needlessly. Success. Okay guys, we're calling an audible. The manufacturer, when they used to supply this switch, put it inside of this toroid over here. Hello. But there's two problems with that. The first is that it requires the entire tube of silicone thermal paste to get this switch to stick inside of the giant hole in the middle of that toroid. The second problem is that's not the hottest spot in here. Turns out the frame, the magnet for this transformer, is the hot spot inside of the power supply. So if we're going to use something to cycle the fan, it ought to be the hottest thing in here. So for better or worse, I have the switch, which by the way, I replaced the tubing on the outside of it because what came from Amazon was not heat shrink tubing, it was just tubing, and this is going to stay in place a lot better. Plus, I know that this stuff is thermally conductive. I have no idea what came from China on the originals. Anyway, Spiffy new red tubing is now adhered to the magnet of this transformer using that silicone thermal paste, but it's also held in place by this wire tie that runs the whole way around the transformer. That lets me use just a thin coat of the paste as a thermal bridge rather than having to use a giant glob of it as actual glue. Alrighty, well, we're over here at the desk where the two meter rig is. It's being powered from the power supply that you can see up there in the corner. I went ahead and cranked the voltage up to 13.8 volts so we could get the radio to draw as much power as possible. The radio is set on 60 watts, which at this voltage and the efficiency of the radio is going to draw 9 or 10 amps, something like that, from the power supply. Uh, my guess is the radio is going to get hot way before the power supply does, but uh, we're going to spend some time keying up and see what happens.
CQ, 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 November 3, November, Whiskey Victor, CQ, 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 2 meter, 146.52. All right, going to call this one a success. I beat on this radio, uh, talked to a couple of people. I even had a good simplex conversation with a guy over in uh, Ohio. Nice to be on a hilltop. But anyway, the radio is smoking hot. The power supply is still room temperature. The fan never did kick on, and it's not because the modification doesn't work. It's because the power supply never got hot. Um, 10 amps is only a third, well, it's a quarter what the sticker says on the side. Forget the sticker. But it's well below, well below half, put it that way, of what that power supply can realistically produce 24-7 without breaking a sweat. And so it just don't need no stinking fan. Leave your questions or comments down below. Uh, think about hitting that sub button while you're down there. And if you're going to try this modification yourself, remember, you are fooling around with electricity. So stay safe, YouTube.